Named the Lunar Module, the unmanned craft is perched atop a huge Saturn 1B rocket waiting for a ride into Earth orbit where it hopes to spend six and a half hours undergoing tricky maneuvers designed to show it can venture safely to the moon. Minutes ago, Launch Control announced the Lunar Module checking out well at this time. We're keeping an eye on the temperatures associated with the environmental control system and a recent report shows that that also is satisfactory. We are counting, and the count is going well at this time. Called a LIM for short, the spacecraft is that section of the Apollo spaceship which will actually land astronauts on the moon and then rocket them from the lunar surface to begin their return trip to Earth. J. Barbary, NBC News, Cape Kennedy. America's first lunar module is scheduled to blast off from Cape Kennedy in about 15 minutes. Technical difficulties have been overcome, and space officials say the countdown is proceeding smoothly. The craft is designed to eventually ferry astronauts to the moon. This is Art Thompson at Cape Kennedy. The countdown is still moving on. Here is Jack King at Apollo Launch Control. Counting. T-minus four, and all still going well during these final minutes of the Apollo 5 mission countdown. We've gone through our final status report here in the blockhouse. Mission Director Bill Snyder and Launch Director Rocco Patron have given a go for launch at this time. We'll stand by for a report from the range as our countdown continues. Now coming up on the 3 minute and 30 second mark of our count. T-minus 3 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Just a matter of seconds ago, we received confirmation from the range that we are go for launch. The destruct system now has been armed aboard the 1B vehicle as we approach the three minute mark in the countdown. The hydraulic pumps aboard the first stage are on, ready uh, to active, help activate those eight engines which are due to ignite at the three second mark. Time there are bolts holding the bird on the path. Less than two minutes away from the actual launch. This particular Saturn 1B launch vehicle is the same one on which the Apollo spacecraft was sitting that had the fire when the three astronauts were killed a little over a year ago. So this is the second time that this particular launch vehicle has been on the path. As Art said, it generates 1.6 million pounds of thrust. And though this is quite a bit smaller than the Saturn V that was launched last November, you'll still hear a tremendous roar as it leaves its launch pad here at Cape Kennedy. The Saturn 1B will launch three astronauts in just a few months from now when the first man test. We are into the final seconds now before the launch of the Saturn 1B. A million and 300,000 pounds will be lifted off of that pad in just a moment. 40 seconds and counting, according to Jack King at launch control. We're on the automatic sequencer, on internal power. Everything is ready to go. All lights are green, according to Jack King. And this is the critical moment. 21 seconds and counting. All eyes straining out toward Complex 37, where the rocket stands. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. There's ignition. Brilliant red flame shooting out from the bottom of the rocket. There it's beginning to move up slowly. Rising slowly on into the blue Florida sky with a huge ball of flame shooting out from the bottom with a plasma effect trailing from that. You're beginning to get a little bit of the roar in the background now as it rolls out over the Atlantic Ocean, climbing ever steadily. A million and six hundred thousand pounds of thrust pushing against the earth, raising that heavy rocket with its full load on up into the sky. And here comes the roar. Continues into a roll and pitch program as it arcs out over the Atlantic. 
Titanic, everything looks beautiful from here. Of course, in the semi-darkness, it's just a big ball of fire as it rises higher and higher. The uh, first stage burns about two and a half minutes, and we should be able to see it for the entire time. There's a huge cloud of smoke still hanging over the launch pad, and now the rocket has hit the colder atmosphere, and it's leaving a huge contrail. Kind of a stair step to the stars. Moving out on over the Atlantic, here's mission control. Yeah, quite closely here. Just as the official launch time is 48 minutes, 9 seconds past the hour. Coming up on staging. Coming up on staging now, and we should be able to see that very quickly. Still moving out and the contrail is clearly visible. Where it first hit the cold atmosphere, there's a huge white billow of uh, smoke that looks like a big white fleecy cloud. They're staging. We've had inboards and outboards on the first uh, stage of the S-1B, and we've apparently had separation. Apparently had separation. That's the, the J-2 stage. engine of the S-4B second stage has ignited. The thrust appears all right. Still, the... Uh, Plots here in Mission Control are following very closely to the line. This S-4B J-2 engine will burn will last some 451 seconds. The particular engine that he's talking about now is the third stage of the Saturn V rocket that will carry America's astronauts to the moon. We've uh, almost lost sight of the rocket. I can still see a pinpoint of light far out over the Atlantic. And that huge cloud that was caused when the uh, rocket hit the colder atmosphere is still sitting. The water valves aboard the Lim spacecraft have been opened. Still, the trout and the uh, plot boards here in mission control are hewing very closely to the line. We're now at T minus 3 minutes 36 seconds after liftoff. The local sunset here at T minus 2 minutes comes at. 5.52 Eastern Time, and uh, this launch came almost exactly four minutes before sunset, and this has been a spectacular sight, Les. It has that. Uh, can you still see the uh, pinpoint of light as yet, Ark? It or just has... faded out for me. My eyesight may not be as good as yours is. Well, I, I had lost it. All flight control positions here in the Mission Control Center all gave them a go. Status lights on his console are all green. That sounds good for an orbit. Uh, the spacecraft should be inserted into orbit approximately uh, 10 minutes after liftoff. It will enter an orbit of approximately 138 by 107 miles, statute miles above the Earth for uh, the first revolution. It will change its orbit several times during the test. The officer reports to my director, Gene Graff, that uh, the trajectory is good for that one. Everything seems good up to this point. Um, uh, one second after liftoff, we'll have the shutdown of the S-4B second stage J-2 engine. After the spacecraft gets into orbit, there will be a separation of a nose cone that was over the lunar bug. Uh, normally, there is the command module in which the three astronauts ride sitting on top. But in this particular instance, where the only thing that they're checking is the lunar module, the command module was left off, and uh, a small nose cone placed over it. This will separate, and the lunar module will leave the... Uh, second stage booster, and they will conduct some experiments with that second stage booster, and then it will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and uh, integrate. The estimated lifetime of all systems aboard the lunar module are something like uh, 13 hours. Of course, it could last a little bit longer than that or a little bit less, and there are going to be some weary flight control people and a core of weary news reporters, I'm sure, before this one comes to an end. None of the uh, lunar module is going to be recovered. All of the tests will be completed, and then eventually the different pieces of the lunar module will enter the 
this atmosphere and be fired up. The primary purpose of this is to see if the propulsion systems function in a weightless condition because these are the systems that will lower the lunar, match, the lunar module to the moon and then lift the astronauts from the moon back to the mothership as it circles the moon. We're still in the burn of the second stage of the Saturn I rocket as it fires towards space and the insertion into orbit of the first Apollo lunar module. This is Art Thompson at Cape Kennedy. We're back here and the second stage of the Saturn I is still burning as the spacecraft speaks toward an, speaks toward an orbit. Still at the press site near the launch pad at Cape Kennedy is Les Roberson. Something uh, that I missed this time, normally when we do the broadcast of uh, the Apollo flight and the previous Gemini flight, our broadcast studio was on the Cape Cod, uh, and the flavor of the um, uh, news reporters and the hubbub of activity near the press site has been lost to me this time, but unless you've been able to enjoy it again, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure that you can hear the noise in the background, as there must be at least 200 reporters all around, some of them broadcasting, others typing, and the majority of them chattering. But uh, the flavor is definitely here. So America's maiden Apollo moon bug is on its way for six orbits around the Earth. And the goal of the initial unmanned trial run to prove its engines can safely ease two men down to the pockmarked lunar surface, give them a sure start back home after their surface exploring has been done. Just a moment. America's Lunar Module 1, or LEM as it is called, is performing flawlessly tonight on the first steps of a busy unmanned exercise in Earth orbit. The test flight is designed to determine if LEM can properly ferry astronauts to and from the moon's surface. More on the mission from CBS News correspondent Steve Rowan. Just at sunset, the eight rocket engines of the Saturn 1B roared into life, and with one and a half million pounds of thrust began pushing the 16-ton payload, Lunar Module Number 1, into a cloudless sky on a long tail of flame. The launch came almost four hours later than scheduled after a lengthy delay caused by two problems in the ground support equipment at pad 37B. But there was obviously nothing wrong with the two-stage booster, and ten minutes later, the lunar module, wrapped in its protective cocoon of aluminum, was traveling at 17,500 miles an hour, 100 miles in space, having achieved orbit. After the initial task of getting it into orbit, the LEM must first get itself out of its protective aluminum tube, something the astronauts normally would do by hooking on and pulling it up. The space module that someday may land in America on the moon is in orbit tonight. No one aboard, but this unmanned Apollo shot is an important milestone. ABC Science Editor Jules Bergman reports. The first flight of the lunar module the strange-looking spacecraft that one day must land our astronauts on the moon. It's the toughest unmanned Apollo flight ever attempted. And here's the way it went. Two, we have ignition. We have The Saturn lift 1B rocket carrying the lunar module into space roared off pad 37 here in a flawless takeoff. It's the same rocket that was scheduled to carry astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee into orbit nearly a year ago before the Apollo 1 fire that took their lives and stopped the space program in its tracks. It was put in storage until this flight. The Saturn booster performed perfectly, carrying the 16-ton lunar spacecraft into Earth orbit, the 15th straight success for Saturn 1. 